In the previous video, we looked at uh, the, the most basic type of binomial tree proposed by Cox, Ross, Rubenstein, and we took the tree down to just a very simplistic one-step um, um, unit, and we discussed how the stock price may go up either to 22 or go down to 18. Now, strictly speaking, that movement is not quite consistent with Cox Ross Rubenstein because uh, here we have a twenty a ten percent increase or a ten percent reduction. In reality, what Cox Ross Rubenstein proposed was that U and D would be of this order of magnitude, where U was the percentage increase, D was the percentage decrease. Uh, one thing we could um, put here: what Cox Ross Rubenstein proposed was that uh, u would be equal to, or d would be equal to, 1 divided by u, which is not quite the same thing. Um, d equal to 1 divided by u is consistent to what we have here, where u is the exponential, and then taking the power of the black shows volatility, or standard deviation of the annualized return, uh, multiplied by the square root of the duration of the time step, and then d the same except a negative power now that's d could also be written as one divided by u um, so in our basic implementation here it's not quite the same right um, we just have a uniform increase a uniform decrease but okay let's proceed the model still can work that's our basic we just allow for the stock price increasing or the stock price falling over one time period then at the end of the time period at the terminal nodes we work out the intrinsic value of the option so if the exercise is 21 and the stock price is 22 then s minus x 22 minus x would be 1 and 20 18 minus 21 so s minus x would be negative 3 in the case of an option of course in the value of the option is never negative because you always have the right to walk away. So in the option framework, the value of the option is either zero, the maximum of zero, or the long position in the stock. If that was negative, we would default to zero. So we get zero here. And then we proceed to emulating the Black-Scholes model where the conditions for delta hedging or risk neutrality are uh, replicated and we have a, a replicating portfolio and we set up a position we have to solve for some we, in order to create this riskless portfolio we say what if we had a short position in the call option how would, would we balance that with a position in the stock how much stock should we purchase or acquire so that in the event of the stock price going up or down the value of the portfolio uh, is the same regardless of the movement in the stock price whether it goes up or goes down so in this um, replicating portfolio we take a delta position in the stock that's the stock price and a short position the option and if the options value is minus one then is, is positive one then a short position short position the option is negative one and then 18 negative zero here if we have a the value of the option was zero then 18 delta minus zero is just 18 delta we set those equal to each other in other words we, we remove the risk by imposing the quality and then we solve for delta and we get 0 0.25 so if we acquire 0 0.25 shares in this portfolio we then have created a uh, a riskless portfolio uh, and because we impose that riskless portfolio because we have um, engineered a riskless portfolio that means whatever the value of that portfolio it can be discounted at the risk-free rate so if the value of the portfolio was 450 to express that 450 value in today's terms we can discount at the risk free rate which we take here is that 12 percent which is very very high for a risk-free rate but we just use it for 
purposes of estimation. Uh, the issue then is what's the value of the call option? And we start off by saying, well, if the portfolio is made up of a delta position in the stock and the value of the stock at the outset was 20, and we had a short position to call, then the portfolio would be 20 times delta, we solve for delta here, 20 times delta minus that call. So this portfolio, when worked out, we discovers 450. When this counted back three months, its value is 436.7. That implies then we can solve for the call by setting the 20 by the 0 0.25 minus the call can be set equal to, to 436. And then it's just a question of expressing the call in terms of everything else. And we get a value. If we do so, the value of the call, the call will be equal to that figure we had before, 0 0.633. Okay. Now, um, just so happens we can take, we can generalize the movement. We can, instead of putting actual numbers, we might have uh, a notation. So S0, the original stock price, the 20, the stock price can go up, the stock price can go down. So we multiply by either U, U is 1.1, and D is 0 0.9 if the stock price is going up by 10% or if the stock price is going down by 10%. So this is 1.1 or 0 0.9. So 20 by 1.1 would be 22. 20 by 0 0.9 would bring us down to, so 20 by 0 0.9 would bring us down to 18. F here denotes the value of the option, whether it's a call or a put. In this instance, we're just going to go with a call. And then the value of the option if the stock price goes up. And then value of the option if the stock price goes down. And we can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. I won't focus so much here. But if we fully go through that implement generalization, we can deduce a risk-neutral probability, which we'll see in a moment is important for uh, some coding, and also for backward induction. In other words, we can, if we take, uh, if we generalize the approach and express these terms in terms of P and FU and E negative RT, we, given the same question again, if we were presented with a set of data like this, the stock price is currently 20, it'll go up by 1.1 or 10% or it will reduce by 10% over a three month period and if the stock price if the stock price goes up the value of the option is one if the stock price goes down the value of the option is zero if i if i if we have these values if we can ascertain or advance these values then it implies we can plug in these parameters into our risk neutral probability and our backwardation or backward induction formulas so if we set out, again, if we uh, take the ERT, so e to the power of the risk-free rate times the time period minus d over u minus c, we find a risk-neutral probability of 6523. And then if we take this value and plug in here and here, 6523 and 1 minus 6523, and the value of the option if the stock price goes up is 1. The value of the option stock price goes down is 0. And then this count by the risk-free rate times the time period, we recover the same value as before. So instead of using the no-arbitrage approach, which is what really is outlined here, we're kind of, this is a no-arbitrage. In other words, we set two portfolios to equal to each other and say there shouldn't be any possibility because they're equal. Uh, there shouldn't be a possibility here uh, to generate supernormal profit. So this no arbitrage approach that results in a value of 63 cent can also be estimated using a risk neutral approach where we apply the risk neutral probability and this backward induction formula and we recover the same value for the, in this instance, the call option. 
So uh, this risk neutral approach seems to be a lot more convenient than using the no arbitrage approach. And as it turns out, it's also the approach that's generally the this idea of risk neutral probability and calculating uh, the backward induction. Uh, these formula are generally what we use in the more larger scale, uh, larger step, um, multi-step um, binomial tree estimation. So to see a simple implementation of that, I have one here. Um, we could look at, um, this is from, we have a stock price currently 40 over each of the next two three month periods. So maybe I can go full screen here. Um, for a second, let's see. So just three dimension, and um, okay. So this is currently forty, and we're going to consider two time periods. So not just one step, but actually we have one step, two steps, and we're going to look at a uh, look at how to value a put option and an American put so if European and American put options okay so um, currently the stock price is 40 again not quite like Cox Ross Rubenstein in this instance we're saying the stock price can go up by 10% or down by 10 uh, Cox Ross Rubenstein they're uh, the lattice the Cox Ross Rubenstein lattice generally recombines at the same value Two step, uh, two steps preceding um, whatever the current time step is. So this value in a Cox Ross Rubenstein a lattice, if we have forty here, then two steps further on at the same level uh, in terms of the nodes, uh, we should recover forty. But we're working here simply with ten percent up, ten percent down. Okay, but our, our tree still works. Okay, so risk free rate. Uh, interest rate is 12% per annum with continuous compounding and we want to know what the value of the European put option is and then afterwards value of the American put option and in both instances the stock price is 42. So uh, we're not given this tree, this is something that we have to generate and also if we're setting up a binomial tree in terms of code we would have to set out um, a, a tree, a lattice, would have to be generated. A, if the stock price is 40 at the first node A, if we multiply by 1.1 we get a, the equivalent of increasing by 10%, so we go from 40 to 44 and if we redo a duc reduction, if we multiply this by 0 0.9 to get a 10% reduction, we come down to 36. If we multiply again by 10%, then we're adding on 360 to 36, that would bring us to 3960. If we add on 10% here, it would take us from 4, 44, and we would add on 40, uh, 440, which would bring us up to $48.40. And then multiplying 0 0.9 by 36 would bring us down here to 3240. So initially, like in all trees, uh, lattice type structures, we know the current stock price and then we've got to generate, if you like, all the potential combination permutations. And and the, the, the finer we make the mesh, the more precise our estimation will be. In this instance, we're going with a tar an arbitrary uh, two steps, which is very low, typically not going to create a, a sufficient level of accuracy, but for our purpose of just demonstrating the tree, uh, still useful. Once we get to the terminal nodes and get the, the terminal stock prices at the end of the six months, so this is one three month period, and then this is the second three month period, which brings us up to six months. Once we get out this far, we have to generate the value of the options at the terminal nodes. So in the case of a put option, if the stock price is higher than the exercise, the value of the option would be uh, zero. And it's only when the stock price falls below, when we take this 39.60 away from 42, we generate 240. So with put options, stock prices, 